Hi everybody, my name is Connor McDonald. This is how you get in touch with me via Twitter, and this is my blog. I'm one of the developer advocates inside Oracle, trying to make your life more productive and successful as a developer. This is the next of the KISS series of videos, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. These are short two minute sessions with a strong developer focus because partitioning is often seen as the realm of the DBAs. In this session, we're gonna look at partitioning options when range and hash partitioning schemes perhaps are not appropriate. If I'm handling a small number of values, let's say I've got sports sales table where I can have different sports associated with sales. And in this case, I'm an American company, so my sports are National Hockey League, Major League Baseball, NBA, and the National Football League. There's only four distinct values in there. If I was trying to do it with a range partitioning system, well, that's a bit fiddly because range partitioning, as the name suggests, is about nominating an upper bound. For discrete values, I sort of have to invent some upper bounds, MLC being one more than MLB and the like. What about a hash distribution? That's where individual values are hashed and put into hash partitions. Well, with a small number of values, in this case only four, you can see here that it's not such a great idea because we actually only are using two of the four hash partitions in this case. We need a nice big spread of distinct values if we want our hash algorithm to spread the rows nice and evenly. Which leads us on to the third type of partitioning system we're covering in these videos, that of list partitioning. It's a very simple exercise to produce a list partition table. Instead of having partition by hash or partition by range, we have the keyword partition by list and then the column we're partitioning on. And then we simply nominate the partitions and the values that we'll assign to those partitions. So partition MLB gets the value where the sport is Major League Baseball and so forth. I don't have to have just one value in the partition. For example, I could have a partition called others where we have more than one sport involved, lacrosse, tennis, and so forth. When I come to insert values, I insert them in just the normal way, and the database will decide which partition to put those rows into. Obviously, if I nominate a value that is not defined by one of the partitions, I'll get an error saying the inserted key does not map to any partition. If I'm unsure of what values will be coming in, what I can also do is nominate what we call a default partition. We can assign this on line 12 here, which simply says anything that comes in that isn't Major League Baseball, Hockey, NBA, or NFL will go into this partition called All Others. If I rerun those four insert statements, you can see now that the value of XYZ has been accepted. Now the question is, which partition did it go into? We're pretty confident it went into the All Others partition, but can we prove it? We're going to introduce a new kind of query syntax now, which actually applies to all partitioning schemes, but it's useful here in this list partition example. You can do select star from a partition table and have this extended syntax called partition and then the partition name in brackets. That lets you do a query against a single partition as if it was a table in its own right. So going back to our example, I can select star from the sports sales for the partition all others. When I look at that, I can see that is where my sport of XYZ fell into, thus proving the argument. Think carefully about using a default keyword or having a partition into which all values fall into. Because at some stage, if you want to separate those values out, you'll actually have to do some table maintenance to move that data around. That might impact your application availability. There are improvements when it comes to this partitioning in 12C release 2 when handling unknown values coming in, but we'll cover them in a later video. You can run all these scripts yourself by going to Live SQL in the link in the YouTube description. In the next session, we'll talk about combining partitioning schemes, what we might want to do with range, list, and hash partitioning all on a single table. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all again soon on the KISS principle, keeping it simple with SQL.